for the Extraordinary Athlete Show. I'm Ira Harge Jr. and I'm also the Executive Director of the New Mexico Youth Foundation and Alliance. Today my guest is Hector Balderas. He is the State Auditor and the, a candidate for uh, the U.S. Senate. Hector, welcome to the Extraordinary Athlete Show. Thanks for having me. I absolutely, absolutely. Well, you're native New Mexican, and um, tell us a little bit about where you grew up and how you grew up. Sure. I was uh, raised in northern New Mexico, a little town called Wagon Mound, uh, 300 people on a good day. Uh, and uh, we were just a small single-A school, and my mother raised me as a single mother and raised by a grandfather. And uh, I'm also a Highlands... Uh, New Mexico University alumni and University of New Mexico School of Law uh, wow. graduate as well. And so at some point I went home and ran for office and have served in the legislature uh, as state auditor and now I'm a candidate for U.S. Senate. All right, all right. I uh, had the fortune to, uh, to call the state games this year and um, Wagon Mount obviously won the state championship. How, how proud are you of that? Well, very proud. I mean, we hadn't won it in over 30 years. And, uh, you know, as you know, sports is very important to all New Mexicans. But when you come from a small town, uh, basketball is a way of life. It's uh, our entertainment. But most importantly, we have a lot of personal pride. And so I was so excited to see the Trojans uh, win the state championship in the pit, which is uh, a big deal. It was an honor for me to play in the pit. And uh, years and decades later, you have these youngsters uh, playing their lives out. So it was a big deal for Wagon Mound. All right. I'm going to deviate from our little script here for a second. Um, um, coach Duffy, Bill Duffy, was my coach at St. Pius, and uh, he's from Wagon Mound. Did you, I don't know if you know, I mean, he was gone probably years before <laughs> you were there, but uh, did you, have you ever heard of Coach Duffy? Oh, yeah, no, my mom... Uh, my mom has told me that he's my cousin, so... Oh, wow. You know, as you know, in New Mexico... You either run into someone who knows someone or you're related to someone. But uh, I'm familiar with Coach Duffy and uh, my mother, and he are related as distant cousins. Oh, wow. That's nice to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I understand that you, you have a sports story. And, um, extraordinary athletes, you know, we're talking to or interviewing kids that have overcome a significant challenge. I understand you had a, a minor challenge as, as an athlete growing up in Wagon Mound. Well, I think athletics is so important to the development of young people. And uh, I was, was, was probably considered at risk uh, or someone who uh, struggled because I came from a single home, single mother family, and was raised in poverty. I was raised in public housing and on food stamps. And so athletics for me was so important uh, to, to learn how to compete, to learn values, to learn discipline. But um, for so many that struggle in poverty, uh, I couldn't afford my basketball shoes. And so I had a, a Coach Marcus, a, a history teacher, step in and help me pay for those shoes. And I paid $5 a month uh, for several months. And at the time, I was ashamed. But um, at some point, the coach said, you know what, I'll, I'll pick up the rest of the, of the bill. Here's your shoes. You play ball. And... Um, What's ironic now is I tell that story to many young people that uh, sometimes we have to overcome uh, obstacles like poverty, like disabilities, like many challenges, uh, just for the privilege of playing and competing. And so uh, I tell that story right now on the campaign trail. I tell it as a leadership tool uh, for so many uh, to not be afraid of obstacles, to really try to compete. And uh, to this day, I still ca stay in coach, uh, touch with Coach Marcus. Oh, good. good. So what sports did you play? Uh, basketball and baseball. You know, uh, Wagon Mill, we don't have football. Uh, but uh, loved to play basketball. Loved, loved it as, a, as an opportunity to get out of town <laughs> and compete. Uh, but most importantly, I still use those lessons I learned every day, uh, even as State Auditor of New Mexico. All right. So growing up, you know, we all have idols, sports idols, or, 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 or other idols, or a combination of both. Who was your sports idol? Well, I looked up to Isaiah Thomas. Uh, you know, not a lot of young, uh, my son today who plays basketball for Albuquerque High, I've had to educate him on who Isaiah Thomas was uh, because he was an older uh, generation athlete. But Isaiah uh, overcame inner city of Chicago poverty, and uh, he, uh, his mom saved him from 
gang banging and a lot of the other struggles that young athletes face in inner city Chicago. And, uh, and he was an undersized guard. So I looked up to Isaiah as a real role model when I was uh, growing up in Wagon Mountain. All right. And that he is. So you've traveled the state probably pretty extensively as a state auditor and probably now on the campaign trail. Um, as you're traveling, what would you say, you, you know, you, you've come across probably youth, children of all walks of life. What would you say is um, some of the issues that they're facing? Well, the first communication that I um, uh, reach out to young people, and, and this is a coming up in the U.S. Senate race where I think we have a Washington, D.C. that's out of touch and no longer investing in uh, in our assets, in our community. And the first thing I tell young people all across New Mexico is that they are extremely valuable to whether or not this nation succeeds. And young people look at me all the time and say, you know, it's the first time anyone's ever told me that, that, I, that I'm actually valuable. And, and they really are. They are the priorities for the community. And a lot of times school districts or administrators or politicians uh, don't communicate effectively that they are the priority. I mean, young kids uh, in education, young youngsters in athletics, uh, everything we should be focusing on should be about their development. And, uh, and we need to make sure that young people know that they're valuable. And right now in Washington, D.C., I don't see those type of investments in youth programs, mm -hmm. uh, after school programs. I see a cutback in, in uh, politicians not wanting to invest in our public schools. And uh, that's something that's going to hurt the future development of this country. Sure, sure. So how would you implement those programs? If you're, if you're elected um, our senator, well, how could you implement those? Well, as, as state auditor and also having grown up in systemic poverty, uh, what I've seen as a real opportunity for this country is to begin to stop spending so much money overseas, whether it's military conflicts, foreign aid packages, uh, we need to make sure that we're investing in our domestic priorities, which should be about young people, it should be about schools, it should be about access to health care, and it should also be about uh, paying instructors and coaches and teachers what they're really worth. And so we have a huge opportunity to stop spending so much overseas and really begin to invest in our people, and most importantly, our educators and our young people. As executive director of the New Mexico Youth Foundation, um, I recognize that we're not going to be able to hit every need that every child in New Mexico will have. You know, we're not going to be able to find a program or at least implement a program. So how would you prioritize those programs? I mean, what would you say we would need to do first and, and who, we, who could we collaborate with in order to, to help our youth? Well, I'm excited about the foundation and what you're trying to do in New Mexico because there's profound need that not only government nor the nonprofit sector can't solve all the problems and fill all our needs. But what I can tell you is there does have to be greater collaboration between school districts, governments, working more closely with nonprofit agencies and foundations so that you can collaborate and attack. Uh, many issues together. I mean, we have an obesity epidemic. We have youngsters that are being raised by single parents. We have too many youngsters in poverty today and not receiving the type of instruction or training or health care uh, that they need. And so one of the areas that I'd like to see is, as a senator, I would bring all the leaders together, all our foundation leaders, all our nonprofit leaders, bring them together with educational leaders and instruction uh, instructors and business leaders and begin to really leverage our assets. You know, we have great corporate partners uh, in the state of New Mexico, but they don't even know all our needs. So foundations and nonprofits really can be helpful in helping us assess really what those needs are. And I can tell you that the federal government's going to continue to cut programs like NYSP and sports programs. Uh, that's an awful trend that I'm trying to fight against. But if we don't do what we can to collaborate here in the local level, uh, I'm worried that too many youngsters are going to fall through the cracks. All right. All right. You know, recently in in New Mexico, and won't cite specific cities, but you know, we've we've had mishandling of funds, federal and state funds um, that should go to our youth and go to our our young and to those programs that would help them. Um, 
as as a U.S. senator, what would you do to kind of safeguard those those programs or put into place something that would protect those programs? You know, one of the things that we can do to focus on uh, on creating jobs in New Mexico is set up federal grants through local junior colleges or universities where professionals, whether they're volunteers or paid staff at nonprofits or at public schools and coaching programs or booster clubs, we can set up uh, instructors through federal grants to better train uh, uh, coaches and officials and parents how to better utilize public funds because when you start to fundraise for booster programs or athletic programs it then becomes public money and it does have a, a higher standard of scrutiny so um, I would set up these educational training programs for free uh, that way because ultimately when you protect those dollars you're really giving the young people a chance to benefit from all of those dollars and make sure that you're not a victim of fraud or embezzlement the second thing that I would do is to, to, to set up additional trainings to, to teach professionals how to fundraise and how to set up strategic plans for their organizations because if we don't continue to create good sports organizations and after school programs and, and educational programs, uh, our young kids are not going to receive those benefits. So we could un un leverage universities very well and as a senator I would fight for that kind of funding to make sure that those dollars are flowing down to our young kids. Right, right. So, as I said earlier, you know, the Extraordinary Athlete Show is a show that highlights and features um, athletes, student athletes around the state that have overcome a significant challenge, whether it's physical or chronic illness or disability, or in one case we had a, an athlete save a little 18-month-old baby's life. And um, so, you know, kind of keeping that in mind, um, we have many students, not just the student athlete. We got students, student athletes, and people choose different walks of life. You know, different extracurricular activities. Um, you know, all kids have the ability to be extraordinary. So, kind of as a final thought, what would you say, you know, to to the youth of New Mexico? Well, I think that that our young people in New Mexico deserve uh, a very healthy environment. They deserve environments to grow and really achieve their potential. And what I love about uh, seeing athletes compete and then seeing athletes take wonderful leadership roles and be role models in their community, uh, I just get moved because they really express the goodness of our community. They are wonderful ambassadors to our community. You know, recently I encountered uh, a group of uh, young lady athletes uh, from a high school and their mission was to uh, work with Down syndrome students at their high school and really set an example about civil rights, about human rights, and really about breaking barriers and making sure that even athletes with special needs are welcomed, they're valued, and they're respected. So uh, I support all athletes but I encourage anyone who's competing today that they understand that they have a special contribution in giving back and that I as a public servant am just grateful uh, to see them flourish and have great high hopes for the athletes of New Mexico because I know they're going to go on to be our leaders uh, of these communities. So I'll do everything I can to fight for them uh, because they are so important to our community. And I, and I know they will appreciate that. So, sure. well, Hector, thank you for being on the Extraordinary Athlete Show. It was uh, wonderful having you. I'm glad you could make the time to visit with us. So that's it for this segment of the Extraordinary Athlete Show. We will uh, catch you uh, next time, or we'll catch you actually at the uh, Extraordinary Athlete of the Year Banquet on May 30th at 1130.